get started. Um, I'm uh, David Narkowitz, uh, Mayor, and um, I welcome you all tonight. Uh, this um, meeting sort of grew out of a meeting that we had with the North Street um, neighbors, uh, as well as meeting with the Ward 3 Association and talking about some of the questions that they have for me on a monthly basis about the ward and about issues in the city. And, the, and um, one, kind of a feeling that there needed to be some additional follow-on to the proposed North Street improvements, traffic improvements that were being made, and wanting to have the DPW come back, talk about the program, as well as uh, answer some specific questions that have been formulated by the neighborhood. So before I turn it over to, um, to Joan, I wanted to just introduce so that we know all the city officials here. First, your city councilor, Owen Freeman Daniels, is here. Um, Ned Huntley, who's our director of public works. Uh, Dave Letter, um, who's our is in our traffic engineering department, um, as well as uh, Felix Harvey and uh, Laura uh, Hanson. Hanson. Hello. Sorry, I'm, Laura's fine. After seven, I'm losing it. So uh, Laura Hanson as well. So they're all here and can uh, talk about some of the engineering aspects of the of this uh, process. So. Appreciate you coming out tonight. We've got a fan going. Hopefully the fan will uh, provide some relief. And I'll turn it over to uh, Joan from the North Street Neighbors who wants to kind of go over some of the stuff that they organized for the meeting. Okay, thank you very much. So good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. I'm Joan Rasool, and my uh, partner here is David Newton. Uh, I'm delighted that you came out tonight and that you have participated in the development of the questions uh, for tonight's event. You have a list of the questions in front of you. Um, Wait, I'm getting there. <laughs> and uh, uh, these are questions that we submitted to the DPW, and they have graciously agreed to respond to them. So the format that we're going to follow for tonight is to have them work through the document questions that you have there. Uh, I talked to David. It sounds like it may take 40 minutes, maybe less, maybe a little bit more. And that after that, we will have a question and comment period, and uh, David Newton is going to take over that part. Uh, but before we get started, I wanted to first thank our Ward um, 3 City Councilor, uh, Owen Freeman Daniels, for his quick response to our first um, uh, letter to the DPW and uh, other folks and also to the mayor for being willing to meet with us and to also help facilitate this meeting. And finally, and importantly, to the DPW, who have agreed to, um, to work through some of the questions and help us understand better what this project is. Uh, absolutely, this is a, a large project. It takes a lot of effort and costs a lot of money. Uh, so we're really pleased that they're willing to hear us and would you listen to that. So I'll turn it over to them at this point. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is David Valletta. I'm the senior engineer at the DPW Engineering Department. And uh, we spent uh, a lot of time trying to uh, get a good project for you out there on North Street. I feel like there are a lot of improvements that uh, will be taking place there. I know it's going to be a disruptive activity for uh, particularly the next six months. Uh, but I think in the long run, everybody should be pleased with the, with the end product. At least we hope so. So as Joan said, the North Street neighbors provided us with a list of questions. I believe you have copies of those in front of you. I don't know if you've had an opportunity to uh, review all of those uh, yet, but I'll just uh, give you a brief overview of the different sections that they've provided here. There's a section on sidewalks and curbing, a section on traffic and parking, a section on crosswalks and bicycles, trees and plants, and logistics. So at, at this point, I'm sure you may all have a number of questions that don't necessarily fall into the specifics that are here, but just as a matter of simplicity and form, I'd like to go through uh, the questions that have been posed to us and provide uh, brief answers uh, at this point. So if I could ask that you hold your questions until I've worked my way through, uh, then we can uh, have a further discussion at that point. So to begin with, the North Street neighbors uh, are very pleased with the DPW's decision to use concrete for all sidewalks the full length of North Street, and uh, our questions reflect this change. Uh, I do need to make a brief comment uh, on this statement. 
and that is that the contractor, when they did the project, bid a certain amount of concrete sidewalk and a certain amount of bituminous sidewalk. And as we noted, the bid prices came back so that there was not much difference in cost per area, per unit area, for bituminous versus concrete. So we can potentially put concrete sidewalks throughout North Street. But because it's such a significant quantity change to the contractor, we will need to work with them and make sure that that is a workable situation. We'll probably need to do uh, what's called a balancing change order, where we essentially would need to exchange a certain unit quantity for another unit quantity. So you have to understand that when a contractor bids on a project, they're given a certain uh, quantity, estimated quantity for particular items. And the assumption is that they're pretty much going to be using somewhere in that approximate quantity. So making the change to concrete is a bit of a shift because it changes significantly the quantity of some concrete sidewalk versus what we've been on. Uh, but I, we haven't had an opportunity to talk to the contractor about that, but we will make every effort to uh, see if that's possible. Sidewalks and curbing, number one. Would the DPW support a request to the mayor to fund granite curbing for the entire length of the street instead of just in limited sections? What steps could the North Street neighbors take to help make this happen? Um, the sidewalks, roadways, and curbs are all funded from Chapter 90 funds, which is a state allocation. And the DPW has accumulated a certain amount of funds uh, in that um, in that area over the past year or so in order to be able to help fund this project. This project will be using a significant portion of those Chapter 90 funds, but I just want people to be aware that an upgrade to granite curbing would be depleting that account even further. And at this point, <clears throat> in fact, the state uh, has not provided any allocation for Chapter 90 funds to the cities and towns. Things are stuck. So I just wanted to make people aware of that. Uh, and ultimately, the DPW de determines the uh, allocation of the available construction funds. However, the mayor is the one that signs off on the Chapter 90 allocation. So um, if you feel that uh, this is something that you want to approach the mayor about, I think you might be amenable to that. But um, I don't know quite how that decision will be made. Number two. Um, at their May 23rd meeting, members of the Board of Public Works acknowledged the contradiction between the requirement that new subdivisions have granite curbing, but that no such requirement exists for the rebuilding of existing streets. Board of Public Works Chair Terry Culhane stated, quote, on our street, the bituminous curbing, the bituminous is breaking up. It's cracked away from all the driveways. Mr. Huntley reiterated that, quote, granite curbing has a much longer lifespan. All these things are true. Um, there's no doubt about it. Uh, the, in fact, the current requirements for new subdivisions is that they have granite curbing throughout. Um, North Street is not a new subdivision. This is a somewhat different project. It's a reconstruction of an existing roadway. And we do everything in our power to, uh, within the limits of budget, to upgrade uh, the infrastructure on existing roadways when we do construction that is as expensive as, as this. So we needed to make some sort of a decision financially about where uh, and how much uh, more expensive material would be appropriate. The granite curbing, contrary to sidewalks, is significantly more expensive than bituminous curbing. Uh, about five and a half times more per linear foot. Uh, if we were to do granite curbing throughout the North Street project, an additional $85,000. So you should keep that in mind when you're making any requests that you might make to the mayor uh, regarding the absolute need for granite curbing throughout North Street. Um, I think that's all I have to say about that for now. Um, number three, we understand that the city received, quote, a good low price, i.e. $100,000 lower than expected. Could some of those monies be used to provide granite curbs the entire length of North Street? Our strong preference for granite curbing is based on durability, environmental concerns, and overall aesthetics. Um, the $100,000 that's referred to here is actually the difference between our engineering estimate and when the, the 
low bid that came in for the project. So from our point of view, we made a pretty good estimate because it was not too high and it was not too low. When bids came in, there were bids that were significantly higher than what we estimated. So there's not really any $100,000 available per se uh, to put towards granite curbing. That's just the difference between the estimate that we made for the project and where the price point of the project actually came in at the low bid. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that when this project was first being roughly estimated about a year or two ago, we were anticipating that the project would cost about one and a half million. So at this point, we're $300,000 above our original estimate of a couple of years ago, and that has to do with the fact that we have provided additional upgrades that weren't originally envisioned, and we responded to the, uh, some of the concerns that were expressed in the March 6th meeting uh, regarding certain sections of North Street, particularly up near Day Avenue, where we were planning to just do a mill and overlay, and it was clear that there was uh, concern about the condition of the road there and that it actually merited doing a full depth reconstruction. In addition, we extended where the original limits of granite curbing and concrete sidewalks were originally intended. So we did make some gesture towards trying to improve the materials. And I think uh, in addition to a couple of years passing, that's also uh, why we have uh, the low bid that came in $300,000 above where we estimated a year or two ago. Number four. Uh, David Valletta said at the March 6th open meeting that the DPW would remove and reset existing intact granite curbing. Is that still accurate? Uh, yes, it is accurate. All the granite curbing that's out there, we will remove and reset insofar as it is reusable. If there's granite curbing, particularly at the radiuses of the intersections, uh, that's not in good enough condition to reuse, at those locations we'll be replacing it with new granite curbing. I should caution you, however, that there's quite a, a mix of curbing out on North Street, and there's actually a fair amount of cast concrete curb. So I hope that people aren't looking at the cast concrete curb and thinking that it's granite curb that's intended to be replaced. So North Street, as you probably know, has quite a mixed bag of materials out there. We have a granite curb, we have bituminous curb, we have concrete curb, we have no curb and we're proposing to at least make some uniformity so that there is curb throughout and the roadway is well defined. Number five, with the new sidewalks, will the new sidewalks be wider than the existing sidewalks? Will the width be consistent the whole length of North Street? The existing sidewalks are approximately five feet wide and that is our standard for new sidewalks, so all the sidewalks that are proposed throughout North Street would be five foot width. Traffic and parking, please clarify the proposal for reduced parking on North Street. Where will cars be allowed to park and where will they not be allowed to park? Will all no parking spaces be clearly marked? I'm going to defer to Laura Hansen uh, on this, our traffic engineer. And uh, the only thing that I'll say is that yes, no parking areas will be clearly marked at the start and end of a no parking zone as they are throughout the rest of the city. Can you do that now? Sure. Okay. Can I ask you to help hands out? Okay. So color copies are on the top. Where are these two pages? Everybody gets one of each of these sheets. One of each. The, the okay. top is color, so if, if you have somebody sitting in the same household, you can share that. I only made, um, well, 20, but I'm keeping one, so there's 19 colored copies. <laughs> um, I didn't know we had such a good turnout, so. And underneath is just, just the Xerox copy. Um, and while they're doing that, can I ask where the attendance sheet, the sign-in sheet right here? Okay. Has everybody, thank you. Has everybody had a chance to sign it? You haven't? Okay. Oh, and if you can maybe pass it to those. Yeah. Okay. Hey, David, we, David, we just, uh, there's been a, 
Okay, so thank you uh, for, for helping me out. You should each have two pages. I have that. Well, there there are there. I don't know if there's enough copies for two color pages for everybody, but um, there should be because North Street is so long. There should be a southern section page and a northern section page of North Street. Because the actual um, 
edge of the road is being brought out in that section to better define that intersection. There's possible chance of getting some trees planted in there, but we're not sure yet. It's a very steep grade, so we're going to be checking on that. Um, if you go north, um, you get up to Highland Avenue. There's a proposed crosswalk there, and there are, for purposes of safety, of seeing a pedestrian in the crosswalk, what I'm proposing is, is to take away one or two, or in this case, three parking spaces, 20 feet sections. I just symbolized it by a dot. Um, because if you're on a crosswalk, you want people to see you. So I wanted to make sure that cars weren't going to be blocking the vision um, for that. So there's proposed three spaces, uh, no parking on the other side of um, across the street from Highland Avenue. If you continue north, there is a uh, a proposed raised crosswalk for um, near Parson Street, and you can see by the lines there's already no parking ordinances there, so we didn't have to change anything. Uh, if you want to go to the next page, you can see Orchard Street, and there's a proposed raised crosswalk there. So um, I'm going to require a um, one no parking space be put in front of that, and that will be with signs, no parking ordinance. If you continue north um, up to Lincoln Avenue, there's a proposed raised crosswalk there. So two parking spaces are going to be um, proposed for, for no parking. And lastly, the other crosswalk is going to be up across Bates. And there's one space uh, proposed there. And on the other side of that is a driveway. So we didn't have to do that no parking. So total, there is um, 14 to 15 spaces being proposed for no parking. Yeah. Oh, right, thank you. Um, I forgot when I made this today, um, at the number 211 building, um, which is on the second sheet, which is near, near Elizabeth, between Elizabeth and Lincoln Avenue, um, I forgot to draw it in here, so my apologies, but on either side of the driveway, we are going to propose one no parking space, so it's easier for people to see getting in and out of the driveway. Um, so that will bring it up to um, 16 to 17 no, no parking spaces in that area. So one thing we did want to point out is that for the area in front of um, near the funeral home, or at the cemetery, people will still be able to park on the road there. Yes, they will be in the street, but you can still park there. We're not taking that parking away. Um, in effect, if you have cars parked in the street, it will make people slow down to have to go around those cars. So there still is parking allowed there. We're not taking that away. So I just wanted to clarify um, with the no parking. I think questions. there was some confusion about the different sheets. Um, so uh, did everybody get a sheet one and sheet two, or did they get yeah. mixed up completely? Does anybody have a sheet with two, what, the two lines on it? Do you have one? I have, I have the, uh, the north end, the north end. The one with the other lines, or the two lines. The north end. That's right. Yeah, I get it. When you're so if, if, you, if you want to keep if you want to have one of these to take home with you and you didn't get the other copy, we can sort we can sort them out at the end of the meeting and make sure that everybody that wants one can get uh, a proper set. You know what, Dave? I think we should put this on the um, link on the DPW website. Okay. So Laura, Laura will put this up on the DPW website on uh, the North Street construction. There is a link there and various documents. The plans are up there. You can take a look at the plans. But Laura will also put this uh, this document up there so you can take a closer look at it. So I think Laura also addressed the first uh, bullet under traffic and parking was that uh, 10 to 15 cars often park next to the cemetery along the fence and regular residents regularly use these spots as do cars from Salusniak Funeral Home and Fairgrounds Fence Overflow Parking. And where will these cars park following reconstruction? And the answer is they'll park on the street where on-street parking is allowed. So as we really aren't taking away too much on-street parking, 
um, off the North Street. Uh, my experience to date is that there's not a lot of people that utilize on-street parking at North Street. You may have a different opinion, uh, but that's been my experience. Uh, B, if condos are built off of Northern Avenue and are only allowed one parking space per unit, where do you plan to have the considerable number of additional residents and visitors park? And the 20-unit North Street condo project, uh, it has provided eight additional spaces for overflow parking as part of their permit. That was above and beyond what was required for zoning. So they have already incorporated into that plan, if it's to move forward, which we're not certain of yet, overflow parking for that development. There may be some other people that will need to park on the street to access that, but uh, there is additional parking above and beyond what's required. Uh, you know, a third again as much as what's required built into the development <coughs> itself. In addition, you should just be aware that there's $16,000 of traffic mitigation available for that project, but only if it's completed. So none of that money is available yet, as I say, the project is really not clear yet if it's going to be moving forward or not. How will the new intersection of North and Market Streets allow for a smooth flow of traffic turning in all directions? Narrowing the street would seem to exacerbate the problem. Will this intersection and its vicinity be a no, no parking zone? So I think Laura mentioned that we're taking away, we're proposing to take away a few spaces right along that intersection where market transitions to North Street. In addition, we're making the roadway much more clearly defined. The roadway right now is very, it's a very open intersection and people will sometimes, uh, maybe more than sometimes, uh, take advantage of that and try to speed through to make the turn from North Street heading towards <coughs> King Street. Um, I think that actually defining the roadway more clearly will actually slow traffic down and make the traffic pattern uh, more clear. Uh, as far as mitigating the traffic at the intersection, um, this that is really a different project. It's really a peak congestion flow mitigation project, and that as primarily has to do with the intersection of North and King Streets and, uh, and Summer Street. And right now the DPW is uh, looking in conjunction with Office of Planning and Development at that whole signalization project, including the signals at uh, King and Finn Streets. So unfortunately, or just the way it is, the project that we have before us is not a signalization and traffic mitigation project. It's really an infrastructure project that's focused on utilities, on roadway, on traffic calming, and on pedestrian safety and access. So as far as congestion is concerned, this project really is not going to address congestion at that, at that intersection. I think it will, um, by clearly defining the roadway, I think that it will keep people from doing things that are uh, they may be doing right now that aren't appropriate in terms of traffic flow. I think people are going to actually have to queue up and they're going to have to be patient because they're going to be more confined to a particular roadway definition. <coughs> uh, striping and having curbing is also going to help, I think, with that definition of where people should be traveling. Number two, what will prevent cars from speeding up the market from the North Street intersection around the curve to the first raised cross crosswalk? Or the reverse, speeding up once they have passed the last raised crosswalk to Carson Street? The simple answer to that is nothing. And that's because we can't control driver behavior. All we can do is provide as much guidance and warning as we can to try to get people to obey the traffic laws. Um, and I think that by providing the additional curving and striping and narrowing of the roadway, that will encourage people and providing additional warning signs. That should encourage people to do what they're supposed to do within the roadway. But it's not our responsibility, per se, to be able to rein in drivers that uh, are not driving appropriately. <coughs> um, the traffic calming measures that we propose, the uh, race crosswalks, will certainly help to uh, slow traffic down on North Street. Um, and related with that, uh, B, we believe that a raised crosswalk at Highland, a section of the street where cars accelerate, would 
greatly increase pedestrian safety. Otherwise, the rationale for the sidewalk there seems difficult to support. And uh, certainly a raised crosswalk there, I think, is a good suggestion, and it's something that we are, are open to incorporating into the project. It's a relatively small change, and uh, if that's something that the neighborhood feels is appropriate, uh, we can certainly consider that. Crosswalks and bicycles. Will the same bicycle ordinance that applies to downtown be applied to North Street, i.e. no bicyclists on sidewalks? How will this be made clear to cyclists? It's a little bit unclear to me whether or not the intention is do you want bicycles on the sidewalk or not. Um, the current ordinance uh, that's in place restricts bicycles and other wheeled uh, vehicles from the central business district sidewalks. And the closest that gets to North Street right now is Market Street from Bridge Street to Union Street. So as the ordinance stands right now, bicyclists are free to use the sidewalks on North Street. They are not in violation of any ordinance. If that's what you'd like to encourage, then we're all set. If it's the opposite, and you actually don't want bicyclists on the sidewalk, then the mechanism for doing that is to talk to your city council and have them bring forth a possible change in the ordinance to extend that prohibition to North Street. Will the DPW confirm that ADA compliant curb cuts and tactile markers on the sidewalks and side street ramps are mandated? ADA compliant curb cuts and traffic warning strips are enforceable standards and are therefore included as part of DPW construction standards. Um, tactile indicators, I don't know, again, it's unclear from the question whether you're in favor of them or not in favor of them. If you are in favor of them, not in favor, in favor of them, then Yes. Can I ask a question that's related to that? Sure. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to defer because we do have a form at this point. Can you hold your question until yeah, we get I can. to the that's end? Yeah, I can. That's fine. Yeah, it's related um, to tactile. And, you know, we have, there are, there's at least one person I know in the North Street neighborhood who is visually challenged and the tactile indicators are meant to be an aid to uh, people with visual impairments. And that could happen to any one of us at any time. So uh, you could be coming back from, uh, from the eye doctor with your eyes dilated and walking, and you might want to be able to have some indication that you're approaching the street. Trees and plants. Will the DPW have a professional tree service on hand to tend the root systems as needed? Will the city replace any trees it deems necessary for removal with young trees, not saplings? There is a universal concern about preserving the many trees along the street. As part of the project, the construction plans, the contractor is required to consult the DPW arborist prior to any pruning of branches or, or, uh, or roots. <clears throat> and we will protect the trees to the fullest extent possible. Um, if any trees are to be replaced, we typically replace them with two and a half to three inch caliper trees. So these are full sized trees. They're not whips or saplings that will have a difficult time uh, struggling to establish themselves and take 10 or 15 years to uh, really become vibrant. Uh, on a related note, can the sidewalk jog around the cemetery tree? The tree is perfectly healthy and North Street has lost too many trees over the last few years. There is strong sentiment not to remove it. So the tree in question you're probably all familiar with. This is a fairly large uh, Norway maple, about 36 to 40 inches uh, at breast height. Uh, I had Rich Parcelletti, who's our current highway superintendent and former parks and cemetery uh, superintendent, who has a lot of experience with trees, go out and take a, another look at that tree. It had been his opinion that it was declining, but he went out there today and he was a little bit surprised to see <clears throat> how healthy it was despite uh, some dieback on some of the lower lower reaches of the tree. However, he did mention to me that uh, it is a Norway maple, and Norway maples have a very shallow root system. In addition, you'll notice that that tree is closer to the roadway than any tree on North Street. And his concern is that because we're doing full depth reconstruction where we will be removing 16 to 24 inches of material below the paved surface, that that's going to really negatively impact that tree. And his recommendation is that it actually be removed. Um, so that's 
where we are currently with that. Um, I can't say I'm not an arborist, so I can't say for sure, but I would uh, I, I bank on his recommendation. He has a lot of experience with trees. The roots of several existing trees, particularly in the area of View Street, have broken the bituminous sidewalks. How will the DPW handle the root systems of these trees for the new sidewalks? So I've been out on North Street plenty of times, and I realize that in View Avenue and other areas along North Street, there are some large, uh, really gorgeous trees out there, and they're right up against the sidewalks. I'm sure when they were planted, they had no impact on uh, sidewalks that may not have even existed at the time. And uh, they, over the years, have obviously begun to encroach in the sidewalks, uh, the roots and heave the sidewalks. So we're going to have to find a delicate balance here uh, in terms of trying to protect the trees as best we can. We've done everything we can to try to pull the sidewalks, the proposed sidewalks, a little bit further away from trees than they are right now. We've also been able to jog around some of the trees a little bit further. And we would also have the option of being able to actually build the sidewalk up slightly where it crosses the roots uh, as long as we stay within our ADA compliant slopes on either side of it. We may need to cut some roots. It's really going to be a field decision. We'll do the best that we can. The contractor is required to, as I said before, consult with the city arborist before he does any root pruning or branch pruning on the trees out there. At the March 6th open meeting, the DPW stated that residents could request the planting of new trees. What is the time, time frame for making those requests? Where would those trees be planted? Does the plan already include this kind of landscape planning? I think I'll start from the back here. There is no landscape planning included in the contract at this point, um, but it would be something that would be appropriate to look at once the job is complete. Um, residents can put in <coughs> requests for the planting of trees at any time, but obviously it makes sense to wait until the construction is completed. The appropriateness of the location, however, should be something that's done in conjunction with the DPW and um, using the tree committee has a list of recommended tree species that they would like to see planted when you plant trees in the city to maintain diversity and prevent the development of monoculture of trees or trees that are particularly susceptible to pests and diseases. So people would be uh, certainly able to contact the DPW if you have a location that you would like to uh, see a tree planted. North Street is a fairly narrow layout, uh, however, and with the roadway and the sidewalks, there's not a whole lot of uh, substantial green space to plant trees within the city layout. There will be some area that we're trying to recover uh, where North Street turns to go into King Street. Uh, that seems like it would be a good location. Across the street, there is also, as Laura mentioned, an area where we'll be tightening up the roadway a little bit. It's a little steep there. I'm not sure if that's an appropriate place or not. There may be one or two other locations where it might be appropriate to uh, squeeze something in. Um, but as I say, the space within the city layout is somewhat limited out there. Uh, Ned mentioned that a couple of years ago, uh, National Grid had uh, tree planting Plan. National Grid obviously has an interest in not having trees planted right under their utility lines because then they come in and nobody's happy because they have to cut them back when they reach the wires and we end up with oddly shaped trees that people don't particularly like either. So we don't know if there would be any future funding from National Grid, but if there is, they had a program where they uh, had some grant money to purchase some trees uh, out within 20 feet of the layout on private property uh, to uh, fill out some tree areas uh, in, in neighborhoods. But if that were the case, then the DPW would plant the tree, the grant would pay for the tree, but if it were on private property, it would be the owner's responsibility to care and maintain for the tree. <laughs> Number five, some residents. <coughs> have elaborate plantings along the tree belt. How will the DPW protect these plants from reconstruction damage? 
So basically, residents with plantings within the layout are responsible for relocating those if they're going to be impacted by the construction and want to save them. Um, the contractor is responsible for establishing where all the existing property pins and boundaries are, and that will give people a much clearer idea where the delineation is between the city layout and their property. Um, the construction that will have any impact on plantings within that area <coughs> won't really be getting, won't, won't happen immediately. So you will have this uh, planting season to move any plants that you feel uh, you'd like to retain and, and put on your private property. Will this project take any private land? Can you clarify for property owners where their property line ends and where the city easement begins? Uh, the city will not take any private land. Um, as I just mentioned, the contractor will be, that will be one of their first orders of business, will be to go out and make sure that they locate any property pins or bounds that are in place uh, so that they're not disturbed during construction. That's one thing that we want to try to avoid at all costs so there's no question after the construction whether or not uh, any of those uh, markers have been disturbed. Um, and the other thing I guess that I would mention in terms of uh, private property is that I believe anybody here who is a property owner on North Street should have received a requested right of entry form uh, at this point, along with a cover letter that the DPW sent out by a certified mail at the end of last week. Uh, we ask that you try to return those uh, as soon as possible. If you have any particular questions uh, about what that entails, uh, I think it's fairly clear in the letter, but if there's any further confusion, you can uh, speak to one of the engineers after the meeting is over here or raise the question uh, at the end. Uh, some residents want to install gas lines while the roads are dug up. How might this be coordinated with Columbia Gas and the DPW? Would Columbia Gas have any interest in prepping houses that don't currently have gas in order to save costs in the future? Uh, basically, if you're interested in getting gas service at your town, at, uh, at your house, this is the uh, prime opportunity to do so, and I encourage you to contact Columbia Gas and let them know you're interested in getting gas service. Um, it's, uh, the road is going to be uh, obviously disturbed uh, with the connection of utilities, and having one more contractor in there making uh, a little connection in your house is probably not going to make too much difference in terms of the overall disruption uh, for the project. But it's basically your responsibility as the owner if you want to get gas service to contact the gas company and arrange to uh, get that service installed. Uh, this is also important because once the street is paved, finally there's a five-year moratorium on curb cuts and newly paved roads. So. Again, if you're at all interested in doing this, now is the time over the next uh, year or so to, to try to get that installed. And finally, will the DPW prioritize renewing painted lines seasonally to maintain visual safety <coughs> for both drivers and those on foot? An invisible crosswalk can be even more dangerous than no crosswalk at all. Um, again, uh, we would love to be able to renew all the painted lines throughout the entire city. This is a budgetary and staffing issue. If the budget and staffing allows, we will refresh the uh, painted lines on North Street uh, annually. However, the director does not have full control over future budgets, so there's no guarantee uh, that that would be the case. I would mention in terms of the crosswalks, however, that it's not just the painted lines that define the crosswalk. <coughs> we have uh, new city DPW crosswalk standards that require the uh, lime green, highly retro reflective uh, pedestrian crossing sign and downward pointing arrow as you approach the crosswalk on both sides of the road from both directions. So those signs should retain their um, clarity and reflectivity for, for quite a while. Um, that seems to be the end of the prepared questions, so I guess I will turn it back over to you. David, for further I, My suggestion is um, there are a lot of pending questions, I have a sense, that are not on this uh, list, but that we kind of review and go down the list 
and, and reserve the first section of your questions for the list itself and try to satisfy those. And we've got, we've got a little more than a half an hour, we've got about 40 minutes. And if we can kind of, in, in the interest of getting, getting as many questions answered as we can and not dwell on any given one too long because we've got, we'll have about 40 minutes to get to all of it. Um, the, for the one thing I, I, I would ask of you at this point, I, it's just occurred, occurred to me that one of the primary questions that I've been asked a lot is the one sidewalk versus two sidewalk question. And I think I'm right with this, and you, you kind of indicated it in several different contexts. Is, and, and at the mayor's meeting also, it was confirmed that that has been a decision that they've looked at very carefully, and they've come to a decision um, based on all the information that they have. Uh, and but I, I sense that that's, if we got into a long discussion about this tonight, that might not be the appropriate way to spend our next 15 or 20 minutes. I mean, is that the, the one versus two discussion, I think, is, is it on the table or is it? I don't believe it's on the table. I just would want to say that uh, in 2002, the uh, city renewed its uh, transportation plan with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, and there was a, a list of 10 top recommendations, and one of those recommendations was expanded pedestrian facilities. And uh, further on in that document, it was stated that there is an ongoing DPW policy for full roadway reconstruction to provide sidewalks on both sides of the street. Uh, that was the case on the Ridgewood Terrace that was reconstructed in 2006. And we really haven't had a lot of full reconstructions otherwise that would have that, that would apply to. We have had some uh, roadway <coughs> repaving jobs such as Prospect Avenue, uh, but that's really not considered a full roadway reconstruction. So I think that's where it's going to so, I, did, oh, I, I guess I should have introduced myself. I'm Tom McCurry. I live on uh, North Street at the intersection of North and Elizabeth Street, 193 North Street. At the March meeting, I think it was March 6th meeting, uh, you did present three different options, and one of those options was to have no additional funds. That's correct. But yet, if you knew of this 2002 Agreement, and you're even you supposed to continue. Now you're saying you're abiding by that. Well, that would never be presented as a as an option. That's what I find confusing. I understand that. Yeah, for sure. And I just to add further, I would suggest you mentioned earlier the balance sheet, balancing one kind of material against another material, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I was feeling myself flat that there's not a necessity to sidewalks, continuous sidewalks on both sides of the streets, especially in certain areas. Uh, and that, that the cost of those additional sidewalks would be rolled over to support the uh, funding of con better concrete sidewalks and or the additional granite curbing that you would, would discuss. I will point out that I do have a special bias here. I my house is about I haven't measured it, but it's approximately 15 feet from the existing curbing. Adding, taking a five foot sidewalk is essentially reducing my front yard by one third. Um, there are other neighbors in the vicinity who have the same concern. I also have some very nice uh, trees which are probably going to survive any sidewalk construction, but obviously I have concerned about their future, the future impact on those trees and other plants by uh, introducing another uh, impervious service right there. So I just want to have you to ask if we consider that the necessity of having two sidewalks on both sides of the streets in those areas. Hi, Dave Fenton, 164 North Street. I also have concern about the two sidewalks versus the one. I'm not really in favor of the two sidewalks. I understand the whole traffic cowing concept with narrowing the road and putting cars parked along the road and creating a, a smaller, narrower area for people to slow down. And in the perfect world, it's probably a good concept, but we're not talking about leave peepers, we're talking about people, students that are going from point A to point B in a real big hurry from Amherst 
to up in Northampton and vice versa. They are parents that are going to Little League games or softball games or soccer games to show the field, and they're running late because school was late, because whatever, people are flying down North Street. We are right at the top of Orchard. People do park there for, they are off the road now for funerals and for wakes. Bringing them in the road, I don't believe is gonna slow down the traffic. It's gonna create a bigger hazard for people getting out of their vehicles to go to those funerals and the wakes, and for people that are just walking their dogs, walking along the roads and crossing the street. I, I just, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I, I know there's an effort to save the tree along, the, along North Street, but uh, with, all the, with all the reflective signage, with all the reflective um, markings in the roads, I don't see the need for another sidewalk along the other side. If people are out exercising, they're probably not gonna mind crossing 20 feet to get to the other side so they can stay on a sidewalk when they're out there for exercise. Um, that, that's my opinion personally. Again, traffic County is a great concept, but North Street is a cut through to get from point A to point B and avoid downtown, the Shaw's uh, turn down by the post office. They want to cut through and get over to, the, to, to King Street and avoid the road as well. It, it, it is a fast road, a very fast road. Um, we've almost been, had our dogs hit a couple times on leashes. It is a very dangerous uh, and speedy road. Thank you. what he was saying about the cars being parked more in the street now, and I, the, the idea of people getting out of their cars and getting hit, because sometimes cars don't see people getting out. And that's a good point, I was thinking about that. And the other thing, and I'm Carol Hutter, and I'm a tenant of Tom and Heather's on 193 North Street. And I also realized that cars come up um, Elizabeth Street, Lincoln Ave, and they turn fast, and a lot of people don't like to cross the streets around there because, and they don't even walk on that side of the street for that reason, because there is traffic that goes too quickly. So if you put a sidewalk there, it's like, it creates more danger for those people that are walking on that side of the street, the side that that the fairgrounds is on instead of so so I don't know it seems a little bit I know myself I walk a lot and I cross the street cross back you know but it's it's, it's dangerous so I know and then I'm seeing the sidewalk it's, it's useless in a way I'm sorry it's my opinion Barbara me yes okay. Uh, I'm Barbara Black. I live at 27 Northern Ave, and I might be the visually impaired person that you referred to. Um, so I have a different set of concerns. I mean, I, you know, these concerns are valid. Um, one is um, how, if there's any way of doing tactile markers where the crosswalks are, because a lot of the crosswalks that on North Street, because the streets are not lined up from one side of the street to the other. There's no, if you're on the side of the street that is not at a corner and there's a crosswalk, there's no way to know if you can't see it uh, where it is. So that's a question, and I'd be happy to have that conversation with somebody separately or whatever, uh, just because it's an issue I have now, and I, you know, I've found workarounds, but it's not, not the best. Um, my second question is, is just in terms of the process of the construction and how we will know what's happening when, and besides by walking out into the street and finding it, um, you know what the plan is. Is there going to be a you know a blog or something that posts what parts of the street are torn up at any given point? Um, you know, just those kinds of logistical things once you start actually doing the work. So can, we, can I just address that uh, briefly uh, as was stated in the cover letter uh, that went along with the right of entry, full construction is slated to begin on July 9th, the week after the 4th of July, and the contractor at this point has said that they will be starting to install the sewer at uh, Market Street, Market Street and the North Street. So we will have a blog that will be updated with uh, weekly notification of where the contractor tends to be for the upcoming week. 
Um, we will do the best we can to maintain that, keep it up to date. Uh, but things do change in the field um, as we go along, and we'll, we'll, say we'll do our best to, to keep you uh, informed of what's happening. Uh, Barbara, we are aware of you. I know I had uh, uh, Sergeant Kirwak. Right, and I, I heard from him, and I wrote back, and I'm sure we'll right. continue the conversation. But but I'm sure it affects other people as well who, you know, for you know whatever. I think we just need to have a way of knowing which blocks, which you know sets of blocks are next, and which side of the street, and, you know, yes, so we're, that we're one can We're still trying to, to get a little bit more detailed information from the contractor, but we do know that they will yeah. be starting at the Market Street end, installing the sewer. So most likely the sewer is, is the more complicated and the uh, deeper uh, piece that needs to go in uh, at the lowest level. So they may be going all the way up North Street, installing the sewer, and then coming back and doing the water and then the drainage. So the progress will move along, but it won't be at breakneck speed. It's not like you're going to leave in the morning and they're going to be you know, two-thirds of the way down North Street by the afternoon. It will be an incremental development. So. I'd like to speak up just for a moment. I'm, I'm Felix Harvey, and I'll be on site just about every day unless I have a substitute, which is Laura or Ann, who's not here today. But um, we're Dave. Sorry to <laughs> So anyways, I'm going to be on site every day, and you're welcome. You know, I'm approachable. You may find that out if you approach me. And um, I'm happy to share information. Some of you know that already. Um, I'd like to just talk a little bit about the pedestrian safety really quickly. And the tactile energy units are definitely planned as we discussed for every crosswalk location. The crosswalk configurations are all much more standardized than the proposed ones. And I can assure you that the pedestrian friendliness, both for visually impaired and others in general, it's going to be much more friendly. You know, it's going to be a lot better situation with ramps and ADA compliant facilities. And I'd just like to comment briefly on the additional sidewalks. And I have to, um, you know, uh, I don't want to come across as some big bossy guy has got it all figured out, but we spent a significant amount of time with the DPW engineers and um, talking with, in previous meetings about pedestrian safety, we don't take this lightly at all. And when, um, if we propose a new sidewalk, we're not doing it just because it's a cookie cutter approach. To, we have to have two sidewalks in by, in by road or by road. There's, um, I have, you know, I, I really believe that these additional pedestrian facilities are really going to um, be a vast improvement about the building. what's there right now. So I just would like to make that comment. Uh, I, I just, before I go to another question, just to extend Barbara's concern about getting information out to us uh, kind of ahead of time about the, the area of the, of the street that's being worked on at any given point. And what a suggestion that I have is maybe something that they could put up on, on online is suggested, suggested detour routes so that people have kind of a heads up as to if they're in the middle section doing it, what's the most <coughs> appropriate way to kind of work around the, the construction site and most easily get to your address based on where the construction site is. And that, that we might be able to get, have some kind of a little di suggested diagram of, of detour routes that would be helpful to drivers ahead of time before they get to to be close to the area where you, where you have to be really concerned about where you're going that morning, how you're going to, you're going to turn left, you're going to turn right. That might that might be helpful. Uh, and you, I'd like you, to add, if, the, if yeah. that were to happen, it should also include for pedestrians. I mean, some of us walk every day on North Street, and you know we'd hate to go halfway down North Street and realize we have to turn around and go back the other way. You know, we're going to go down to town. So, so not just for cars, but for pedestrians. And discussions have come up a little bit about access to your address with the road torn up in front of your address. And, and I'm not sure you have a technique for that, but I'm not sure it's clear to everybody how that works. Yeah, the, the contractor is required. Um, there will be some situations for everybody where you're going to be inconvenienced at your specific location. And those will be when the new water service is hooked up. 
Uh, generally, that doesn't take very long to do, a couple hours at the most. Uh, but the contractor is required to give you 24 hours notification when that will happen. Uh, there will probably be a little bit of flexibility if for some reason you absolutely can't have it turned off for about one or two hours. Um, you know, keep in mind that this is going to be during uh, work hours. The contractor's general work hours will be from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. So access to your property will probably be more of an issue when you're leaving in the morning rather than returning in the afternoon. The contractor will be backfilling all the trenches at the end of the day and making the road passable. Uh, other, other situations where you might not have might have limited access to your property would be as they're going uh, by a driveway entrance or when they have to tie in <coughs> your driveway to the existing roadway to the driveway apron. Again, they're required to give you 24-hour notification, make some direct contact with you to coordinate so that um, as much as possible, you're given free access when you need to get to your property. I just like to comment on that. And we, we, uh, we're well aware of this issue Property. We have no intention of blocking access to your property. Really, at any time, there may be inconveniences, but the contractor is very aware about be building temporary ramps. If you have your driveway ripped out, it's not going to be impassable. They'll throw some dirt in there so you can get through it. And there's many examples and lots of tricks. You might, you'll probably learn a bit during this contract about how we do that. And we take it very seriously, allowing access in and out of property. Uh, my name is Mike Beebe. I live at the uh, top of Lincoln uh, 224. Um, and one of the things, uh, and this is for Laura if you don't mind, uh, one of the things that was brought up the last meeting that I attended was uh, that there would be some kind of uh, signage put in to keep the trucks off of Lincoln. Uh, so that brings up a couple of things. One, um, the, tr the trucks now are I'm a school teacher, so I'm home all day now, and I am totally amazed. I wish I had a nickel for every truck that went by there. Um, they're well behaved, they slow way down, you know, nobody's like cruising right out in the street, no problem. But it's not really appropriate for our neighborhood. And they're loud. Um, I know that those folks who are just to the east of me down in Lincoln uh, double park on both sides of the street to make sure that. A, the trucks slow down, and they got a whole lot of kids out there, I mean, little ones, like running out the street there. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, so, it's, so it's a big deal. Um, um, and I'm kind of curious as well. I also am someone who drives in the afternoon out from the industrial uh, boulevard or whatever that street is that dumps out into Damon. That's a nightmare, getting out on Damon. And if we are now going to try and redirect traffic so that all those transfer trucks end up going out Damon or come in from Damon, how is traffic going to get controlled out there? And are we going to get one of those, this laser-activated, you know, rocketry <coughs> kind of blown up signage to keep the trucks away from Lincoln? Um, you had talked about that. Okay. I have a couple more. Would, sure. If you would mind. Sure. Um, well, I, I can't say it's with rockets, okay? But it is. <laughs> it, is it is. It is called the overhead vehicle detection warning system. And yes, it is coming our way. We are working with the District Two and the DOT office and UMass. Um, I believe a bid just went out for five systems. The first one is for exit 19, and the hope there is to um, use the laser detection when the truck comes within a certain zone, have it send a signal electronically very quickly to an, um, a signboard that says, you know, vehicle over height, no left turn, with flashing wig lights and the wig wag lights, and they will go straight down Damon Road. Um, the electrical is already in the underground conduit, and if anybody goes down exit 19, you'll see a sign. It's all covered with uh, trash bags and duct tape. The sign is waiting, so so that is that is fast approaching. But we are still waiting to hear back from the bids um, for the actual lasers. So.
So I'm hoping that, I was hoping for June, but I think, well, since July is next week, we're clearly going to have that uh, first system up in July. And then um, hopefully another four systems would be um, on King Street, Pleasant Street, and Main Street on the one side of the bridge. And the other system would be on the other side of the bridge, just before Bridge and Holly intersection. So yes, that is, that is coming our way. Um, but I, I feel like, and I think I've said this before, you know, we need a multi-pronged approach on this. It's, it's, not, it's not just one thing, because we're very much aware in the city of, of this, this problem of, of trucks in, in the neighborhood. And I know Councilor Kim Daniels has, has talked to people at Coca-Cola, Mayor Narkowitz has, I have. Um, another thing that they're doing um, is we're, we're looking at having Coca-Cola <coughs> change their delivery address. Um, because one of the, the main problems is, and I've, I've seen it, I've talked to truck drivers from Mississippi and in Florida, um, I followed them into the Coca-Cola plant and I said, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be going down Day Avenue. I happen to follow this one down Day Avenue. And he said, I got four GPS units, ma'am. I'm just following my GPS units. And he was, he was you know, sincere. He, that's what he was doing. So I think because the truck drivers are following the GPS units, even though we get updates to the, to the GPS, if they don't plug in a GPS unit and upgrade it, they're not going to get the new information. And that's, that's a problem. So um, I believe, oh, and correct me if I'm wrong, the person at Coca-Cola was going to change their delivery address if, if you change it slightly um, on industrial drive, uh, then it will tell the trucks to go down Damon Road. So that's that's another um, <laughs> avenue that we're pursuing. Um, in terms of, I know Coca-Cola has has tried to outreach and tell people delivering to to, to go down Damon Road that that has met with um, some small success. We do have some signs out there, but there is an ordinance on for Lincoln Avenue to be to be the escape. So. Um, I don't they're really not know. escaping, they're entering. They're entering, yeah. right. Um, but then they're also exiting, which they're not supposed right. to do. And so we've asked Coca-Cola to, to make that to make that very clear to them. So, you know, we, we are still pursuing that. And um, I don't know if there's any other signage that I could put up at this point. Um, we're, we, we have high hopes for the overhead vehicle detection system and this address change. So... Small, I see small consolation, but it's possible that the actual reconstruction of North Street might be a good deterrent. Right. <laughs> a learning curve for those that are trying to use it in large vehicles. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of these guys, they know that route. They go, they go that way out back. It's easier. Yes. I live on Lincoln Avenue. I've been there 23 years. Yeah, and they so learned something during there's, construction. There's an accident there's waiting to happen. I brought up for you, David, a yep. year ago. A year ago at the Coke plant. Nothing's been done. You know? We'll probably sleep at 2 o'clock in the morning with a bad boy's going to This gentleman, Andy? Well, Harold's making an awful lot of money out of the situation. He has for many years. Um, so that's not a relevant one. Harold's telling Oh, okay. I mean, it, it's big money to, to pull one of those rigs out of front of the bridge. I think the only permanent good solution to this whole problem is to blow up North Street right at the bike trail. There we go. And, <laughs> and to basically, you know that big turnaround in, uh, in the industrial park? I think some genius at one point thought it was a dead end. Maybe it was originally a dead end. But no matter what you do, it means that North Street is going to carry all that traffic. Unless it dead ends at the industrial park. It's a, I know it won't happen, but... Sir? Dennis Helmers, 174, 176 North. I'm sorry I was out of the country for about six minutes, but I had participated in a half-day event at the Bridge Street School with the Smith College students. And my question has to do with bicycle safety. <coughs> uh, there are a lot of, uh, and there was a lot of talk at that half-day session that the kind of classmate put together about Bikeways. Um, North Street has a lot of um, people on bicycles, their children, families, uh, bike clubs going faster than me and my car. Uh, 
are, uh, 20, 25 of them. I don't think that uh, there are people who are like not making the connection between the bike path. People are going to all parts of the city. At night, there are people up until midnight, one in the morning, riding their bicycles. Nobody has any lights. Um, so my question has to do with what happened with the idea of some kind of bike safety, bike path uh, on North Street because it's heavily used for people to get everywhere. I walk. Right. One of the concepts that we looked at was trying to establish a bike lane on North Street. And the problem that we have is that North Street has a fairly narrow layout. And if we were to try to include a minimum five foot wide bike lane on North Street, it would have uh, required moving something like uh, a dozen or more utility poles. And that was an expense that didn't seem like it was a worthwhile trade off. Um, as I mentioned earlier, at this point, um, bicycles are allowed to ride on the sidewalk on North Street. Yeah, they, um, they, they ride on the street. That's, that's the bicyclist's decision, right? right? But in terms there, of the accident waiting to happen, I mean... I, I understand, but there again, it's <clears throat> somewhat parallel to the speeding motors. <clears throat> it's really not something that we have any control over somebody's responsible behavior as a road for the A good, I mean, just an observation about that. One slight consolation is that the overall design is giving us these raised crosswalks that we now do not have, and the overall roadway is going to be a little narrower, narrower plus the cars in the in the roadway, and I, I think that we'll in and of itself, the and, the and, the, and the idea that the bike has to go around the parked car. I'm talking eight, nine, ten-year-old kids with their mom and their dad riding that, you know. Yeah. yeah. But if the traffic is going at a lower rate of speed, which we've done everything we can to encourage with this design, then, as I say, people are going to need to be more patient. Some people may decide that North Street is no longer an expedient <laughs> cut through by virtue of the fact that they're restricted on the speed through the um, people parking on the sides of the streets, the narrowness of the street, and the raised crosswalks. You may find that people start to choose other routes because they don't find it as expedient as they once did. And, and I think that the hope is that the, the Smith Camp is run for the, um, the, the, the one other part in town, oh, Main Street. When we drive in those two areas, we're conditioned as drivers to slow way down. No, nobody is speeding through those areas because they're conditioned. The hope is that once those raised crosswalks go in, that we will begin to approximate that kind of men driver mentality that has been achieved in those two other places. Right now, it's hard to conceive because people are, are going much too fast, but hopefully with the redesign, all of that's going to change dramatically. You had said that it would, I'm Nancy Chamberlain at 83 North Street, um, and I'm right on that curve of North. Um, you had said that it would not involve a whole lot of additional expense to put a raised sidewalk um, by Highland. So how do we go about making sure that happens? Raised crosswalk. That's what I mean. Raised cross, crosswalk. I think we just do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we just so is it done? Can we get your signature? So it's definitely going to happen? Yeah, we can make it happen. There's not a problem. I'd just like to say we kind of have to look at that stuff. We hadn't considered it already, but you are saying it helps out because we have to look at it before we put it in. Mm -hmm. But the, I can't think of a reason why we couldn't. But it's just something wrong with yeah. the profile of the road. You can't get drainage around it. Yeah, we have yeah. gaps anyways. But uh, yeah, I, don't, I can't think of a reason. I just don't want to exclude Actually, that. Actually, that, 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 that's true. We, we did have to look very carefully at the raised crosswalks oh, yeah. in terms of maintaining drainage. <laughs> because you're basically creating a dam in the road as far as the water is concerned. So that, that is one thing that we do need to look closely at at Highland to make sure that we aren't creating uh, a dam situation where we can't get rid of water in the road. So how will we know what your final decision is going to be on that? We'll go back and take a look at the plans, and I'm not sure when we can communicate to North Street neighbors and let them know what the, uh, what the outcome is. 
We have about 10 minutes left. Uh, can we limit the questions a little bit in terms of time, uh, just so that we can get in as many as we can? understand that there may be people that don't aren't comfortable <coughs> with, with what it says and so we were going to be collecting those letters from people that are comfortable and at a certain point uh, this upcoming week if we don't get all the letters back we're going to need to come and talk, talk to you individually and try to do our best to assure you that we're really <coughs> not asking for very much in terms of this right of entry it's really uh, an opportunity for you to get an to the street and allow us to have a minor incursion during the construction process in order to make a new connection to your sewer line so that that's in good shape and so if there's a clean out of the property line so that if there's a problem, uh, the sewer can be cleaned out and to make a new water service connection at your property line and to make a new driveway apron up to the edge of your property line. So the, the line is, a, you know, the property line in some ways is um, thinner than a pencil line. And there's no way with construction equipment that we can just come right up to that line and not make an incursion on your property. So the intention is to uh, allow us to um, work in that transition zone to make the connections we need to make and then to restore your driveway and lawn area uh, in that area. That last sentence about no prejudice and damages, what does that mean? No prejudice. Basically, it, it, what it does is it allows you to bring something against the city if we wronged something on your property. So you basically haven't lost your right to bring a claim against the city if we did something uh, wrong on your property. That's what that is for. <clears throat> so it's actually a protection for you. Yes. <clears throat> To clarify a little bit on this property line issue because we run into this on every construction project that we're doing with these clean outs and water service shutoffs. They go basically right at the property line. Can you speak well, up a little bit, please? I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, talking about this transition area at the property line to make a smooth transition and we're constructing the roadway and abutting your property and we're basically at your property and maybe on it a little bit to make a proper transition. What we want to do is have, you know, I think the people are going to like what you see when we're done. And we have to get there, and it's a ways away. But there are some cases in driveway situations where we may want to go a little further to make your driveway better. That if we stand it right at your property line, um, that may not be the best solution to your driveway. And so we try to, in some cases, go, um, you know, if you have a steep grade or whatever, to, to make that blend nice, sometimes we go, Five or ten feet is on your property to make the driveway better for you. Yeah, that's what ours is like. And it's also crazy. sidewalk, you know, sidewalks that connect to sidewalks, walkways. Um, and we may abut someone's uh, stone pathway. We'll remove and reset that stuff and meet our new sidewalk. I mean, we're, our aim is to make it better than it is. And I'll be there, make sure the contractor does that right. They're well aware they have to do this. They're required, and they know it. Get to do a good job. So that's really what my job is to, to help them get there. And I'm I'm able and available to talk to anybody in their individual. And my name and phone number is on the letter. You're welcome to call myself or Dave. I would also like just say that you know the, the contractor has a certain pride in their work as well. They want to do a good job and have good relations with 
everybody on the job site as well. It's a local construction company out of Longo. Um, they've worked up at the Village Hill. Uh, I've worked with them before in a different context. And, you know, they have every, every desire to make this a good project because they're going to continue in this line of work and they want to be able to continue here. My name is Jason Lusniak, 173 North Street, Lusniak, Kinahal. Uh, pretty much going to reiterate a couple things that I know everybody, this is the bottom, Tom, everybody on my side of the street, we're against the double sidewalks. Um, you kind of brought up, you've done studies and safety issues. Uh, that doesn't hold true at my property. Uh, we have a sidewalk in the front room from Orchard Street, around the front, that I put in make it safe for people that come to the funeral home to walk around from my parking lot in the back. Then we have our driveway that leads to our garage, and then we have a little island, and then we have our main entrance to um, our parking lot, then about another five, ten feet before we reach the bottom property. Putting sidewalks and having people walk across the front of my property through an active driveway to a little island through the opening of our parking lot and then going across everybody else's property down there is not safe. I have quite literally thousands of cars going in and out of that parking lot in those driveways. I have people that <clears throat> live on Orchard Street or coming through, even when we're not doing business, that decide, well, instead of going to the corner and taking a left down Orchard, they like to zip their way through my parking lot. <clears throat> and they'll come from Orchard Street and zip around. I'll be up in my office and I'll see the car going, oh, somebody's stopping? No, they're just flying through. Somebody's going to get hit. If you're going to sit there and put sidewalks in, that is promoting people to walk through a dangerous zone. Um, it, it's not a safe thing. It's going to be an accident happening. There's just no doubt about it. Um, so I'd like to say, no, I don't want that. Pretty much from what I'm hearing, I don't think that really seems to fly with the city. The other thing would be a more personal nature for the business. If you are going to tear up that land, um, I have sprinkler systems that will be going to be torn up. So when we're going to talk to you about that, do you expect me to pay? Who's paying? Things like that, which I don't need to get into right now and waste everybody's time, but um, I would like to just know who I should call to discuss the personal things for the business. Thank you, Jay. Tom Fry, 16 North Street. I just want to go on the record. Um, I know it's contrary to everyone else who's spoken, most everyone else who's spoken tonight. I'm sorry there weren't, weren't more pedestrians here tonight, but just to dispel any illusions that there may be a consensus. I appreciate that you have sidewalks running the full length both sides. And if you want more support to back that up, I could start a petition for the pedestrians as well. And they could uh, show their support as well. So just to make sure no one thinks there is a consensus here tonight. Thank you. I'm Nancy Felton from 29 Northern Avenue, and I'm a pedestrian and also a bicyclist. And I just wanted to talk again about bicycle safety. You talk about riding bicycles on the sidewalk, that makes it hard for pedestrians. It's not necessarily <coughs> safe on a sidewalk when there are bicycles and pedestrians at the same time. Um, it's just, you know, I've been start, bicyclists aren't always the best at telling pedestrians that they're coming up behind them. You know, I'm walking along, swinging my arms, I could swing it out into a bicyclist's face because I don't realize that they're there. I don't think it's a great mix. And then when you're talking about more cars parked on the street, I've had the experience of being what's called doored, where the, a person getting out of a car doesn't think to look for a bicycle. The bicyclist has no way of knowing that there's somebody in the car about to open the door and bam, there you, go, there you are. So those are just, I mean, I don't have a solution. I don't know one sidewalk, two sidewalks, parking, not parking, but I just know these are things to think about. It's just, it's dangerous. A suggestion that I have with that, and we were talking about it, and you know, I have pretty strong feelings about the dynamics of where the bikes end up, is that 
if, if you make a choice, be better to have it be on, on one or the other, but, but giving them the choice for either compounds it even more, I think. So my suggestion would be to make a commitment to have it be on the street only and not on the sidewalk for reasons that you've just stated and live with it and hope that that's a, a relatively safer way to go than the other way around. Because once the sidewalks are improved, there's going to be an increased temptation to get up on that sidewalk with a bike if there are a lot of cars that you have to dodge on the street. But conversely, the danger factor on the street, uh, on the sidewalk itself, might be more of a problem than in the street itself. And I would, I would personally suggest that they they extend that ordinance of keeping the bikes off the sidewalks for the same reason we keep them off in the center of the city, because the, we are not a, a peaceful side street anymore. We are a serious thur thoroughfare, both on the sidewalk and in the street. Any, one more question, maybe? Does anybody has any more? When is, uh, when is the sidewalk going to be done? This year or next? Sidewalk is going to be in stage two, yes, and next year. So does that, does that mean that we have another year to possibly revisit the sidewalk issues? I don't think there's too much to revisit unless you feel like. I mean, I, <clears throat> it's a difficult decision to make because uh, democracy is a messy process. Mm -hmm. Unless I can get some sort of balanced, full neighborhood accounting of where things are, I don't think we need to revisit the sidewalk issue. That's my personal opinion. I don't necessarily represent the DPW on that. But I feel like uh, I feel like there is support for sidewalks on both sides of the street, and I don't feel like we have every person in the North Street neighborhood. sidewalks, but I would mostly just like to reiterate Tom's question, it is uh, if two sidewalks was off or, or one was off the table in, on March 6th, why did it appear to be on the table? It, 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 we were in what it looked like there were three it looked to me like we, you know, here's three menu items, which do you want and maybe it was probably actually we're looking at three possibilities uh, I think we it also sounds like we were really not looking at. It. We were looking at three possibilities, but we also, I believe, during that presentation, that I, I told you which one was clearly favored by the DPW, and it was my sense at that meeting that there was not a consensus one way or the other in terms of sidewalks on both sides of the streets or just maintaining uh, the existing situation. And we have received support uh, from a number of quarters for sidewalks on both sides of the street. And so at this point, I really do not have a clearly balanced sense of how much there is in favor of two sidewalks or a single sidewalk. So maybe we need more clarity because it's actually in the meeting minutes from there that we got it on the record that a public meeting was held of the North Street community, a vote was had, and the vote was we only wanted one sidewalk. And it's on the record. I'm not trying to revisit. I'm just sorry, what, what meeting are you referring to? The, the, the meeting we had in this room. March 6th. No, no. We, we, we had a meeting in your house. Yes. Right? And we, we put up like 20 no. different things we wanted to make a priority. And anyway, I, so I guess to put all that aside, we've done this. Right? Every group's gone out, we've done surveys. So let's 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 put this to bed. So what is it? What do we have to do? What's the survey? How many people? What's the percentage? Now let's put it to bed so you guys don't have to hear about it anymore. We don't have to feel upset about it. Let's let's put some finality to this. Let's settle this once and for all. I just like to say that I don't have all the answers. I'm just an engineer that works in the engineering division. So we're trying to put put a good product out there. Yeah. We're balancing many variables transportation, users of the road, the sidewalk, bikers, and I think during this process, we've come up with a pretty good solution for that neighborhood. And it's not all, 
it's really not necessarily a consensus decision to, try to engineer a room with. That's, That's my opinion. Opinion. So what is the decision? It seems every time it's like, well, and I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm actually trying to make the point that we don't have this meeting in two months and then another one in three months and then again next year. We, we've been revisiting this issue for years now. Honestly, and I mean no offense to this, I don't want to do it again. I mean, no, no disrespect. Y'all love the people. Right? So, so, I mean, I don't know if it's going down into the bylaws. How do we put it? put an end to this. I, I hear DPW not, not shutting the door on this permit. There was a crack just made. Um, sorry, door crack. How do we just put an end to this? I mean, I'm in, to be clear, I'm in favor of just one sidewalk, but uh, you said if we need a particular survey of how many people on the street. They've already made their decision. But, but I haven't heard anyone say that. So. I just, my name is Heather McLaughlin. I have lived on the corner of Elizabeth and North for 30 years. My bedroom is right there at that corner. I know the issues of that corner. There is a rise when you come up there. When you come to North Street, you have to come up and put your nose into North Street in order to see oncoming traffic. And that is my particular reason against sidewalks. And I know that you have to go right out to the curb to get that five-foot sidewalk in front of our house. I'm, I'm not, I, I think Tom and I are fine with losing the plants. And we like better curbs. It looks pretty cruddy there beyond our nice plants. But that corner, the way cars have to come up and accelerate and get to the end of it, how Lincoln and, Elizabeth and, and uh, Orchard do not have that rise there. But cars come up there, and it is such a heavily that seems to be the court, that seems to be the way people come through. I don't know, maybe if you live on Lincoln or Orchard, you might say something else, but for that. And I'm looking up at Terry's house. I can see the sidewalk right there in front of her house, right there. You get the Sluzniaks, and suddenly you've got curb cuts, and you need to keep the sidewalk right even with the street. And how are you going to have it safely and have the the sidewalk, have the road, go, the driveway come down? You're going to have to make this some, some kind of a curvy kind of sidewalk there to go through Sluzniak's? I mean, this, I, well, if you go look at that road, look at Sluzniak's driveway, you're not going to be able to have a safe level sidewalk that's even with the street and have curb cuts there. I just like to uh, so I'm sorry, I things I, I've looked at it very closely here. And the reason we can't keep the sidewalk as it is is it doesn't, it was built as a in a box, so to speak. And we're, we're trying to make this whole road better. And so we have to rebuild. We're bringing the curb out about a foot, a foot, maybe six inches to a foot in that area. We're not going to be introducing any funny curves in there. And we will make that a good sidewalk. Five foot sidewalk up against curbs is considered safe, much safer than a four foot sidewalk, which exists in many places. It's, it's a sort of state of the art safe sidewalk for pedestrians. So I just we're doing our best to put it. seems like we're, you got a, a, a whole lot of traffic coming off of a uh, bridge onto North, and those three streets are prime. And they're not necessarily, I mean, I think there's some wisdom to one sidewalk on the west side of North Street or north side of North Street, just to keep, just so that it didn't, there wasn't there any major streets coming in with traffic. And it makes a lot of sense to see why that sidewalk is that I just want to go back and, and sort of reiterate what, what Carl is saying. Is it on the table? Is it off the table? We can walk out of here in peace knowing what the answer is, if there is one. Or is there an opening or not? I mean, people have to go through a process to, to figure it out. But we need to hear clearly from the DPW so we don't come back in two months and say, well, here are another set of things. Here are another set of issues. So. Uh, my stand on it is that uh, I like the two sidewalks. I think if you went to the Transportation Parking Commission, they would throw a strong support having sidewalks on both sides, especially in this downtown neighborhood, as I call it. It is a common neighborhood in downtown. There's a lot of traffic out there, pedestrian traffic, and to deny people safe crossing and safe passage on both sides of the street, I think would be an error. 
with going forward with this project at this point. That's my personal belief as an engineer. That doesn't sound like it's a decision. I'll make the decision. Okay. <laughs> I, it's up, it stands as it is. So you're saying sidewalks on both sides? Yes. Period. All the way except for Lincoln to Day on the east side. Because it was going to kill, I think, four or five large sugar maples. So if I had a sugar maple on the island, you would have no cost my business? That just really doesn't make any sense from what you guys just said. You need it on both sides except for this one area. Sugar maples are important. You could narrow that part of the street. They are narrow. We could narrow it. are narrow. It's now 20 minutes up. They've gone about almost 15 minutes over. Uh, we could, I'm sure we could discuss this quite a bit longer. Um, but I think we've all been, we've, we've dealt with a, a lot of complex issues very well tonight. And I thank everybody for their effort, especially the DPWs uh, and the mayor's effort to make the meeting happen. Uh, I hope there's been some clarity that we didn't have when you came in. Um, the, the website and the post office box for a little while will still be up and we welcome that you continue to talk to the, the neighborhood uh, group that we've put together. If there's any further strong thoughts that we could give to them that would help them and aid them in, in their process of getting through this. So I thank all of you for, for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you.